We are facing a crisis of authenticity. From fake news to deep fakes and now the rise of generative AI, it's becoming harder than ever to tell true from false, fact from fiction, real or unreal, and even what is actually made by humans or by machines. There are presidents being chased by fake police, popes in white puffer jackets, and even machines that hallucinate not only facts but academic citations. In all of this, what does it mean to live in a world where you don't know what to believe? Futurist and author of Future Shock, Alvin Toffler, famously said one of the definitions of sanity was knowing real from unreal. Soon, he wondered, will we actually need an entirely new definition? We've always struggled with knowing what is true and what isn't, and we've over time developed technologies and tactics to help us discern between real and unreal. I mean, take photography, for instance. Now, you'd think compared to the subjectivity of a painting or a sculpture, a photograph would conclusively show what was actually there and what happened. Until, of course, it doesn't. I mean, even long before the rise of the digital era made us question the veracity of an image and its ability to be manipulated and changed, philosophers like Walter Benjamin asked, how does art change in an age of mechanical reproduction? He worried that the aura of an artwork would be stripped when you take away its context of when it was created and its location. And this would ultimately pave its way to be misused and become a weapon of mass propaganda. I have no idea what he would have made of this new AI era of generative images. But the truth is, is that even now in this moment, as we start to think about the use of technologies and regulations to try to prove what is actually real, I think we are once again also doomed to fail. The authenticity crisis is not going to be so much about what is real or unreal, but rather our attempts to do something about it. As much as I'd like to believe that we will be able to use technology to solve our problems, I believe that they're likely to create even more. I mean, sure, we will find ways to use AI to determine whether or not a creation or a work has been generated by AI or not, but all that's going to end up happening is that those very systems will be used adversarially to train other AI systems to be more effective in creating more generative artworks. Similarly with regulation. Whatever you believe about the 2020 pandemic, one thing is certain. It has fundamentally damaged our trust in institutions and governments. Now, what this means is any attempt to regulate what is real is at best going to end up as an exercise in partisan politics, or at worst, it's going to resemble some kind of Orwellian nightmare. There is another dimension to this other than politics, and that is money. I mean, what is the value of an NFT? It could be millions of dollars or it could be nothing, depending on whether you bought it on the blockchain or whether you right-clicked and saved it to your profile. What is the value of a blue check mark authenticating you on Twitter or on Instagram? Once again, it could be a fortune or it could just be $9 a month. People often mistake the two concepts of authenticity and digital scarcity. Digital scarcity in the 21st century is something defended by technology, but it's also largely propped up by belief. The concept of something being rare is only rare in this world of abundance when you trust the people who are not actually going to create more of them or release more versions or make the limited edition unlimited. It's a very fragile basis for any real kind of social or economic civilization. So I think when it comes to authenticity, we actually need a new set of strategies in order to survive in this world of chaos and non-belief. I've got three that I want to share with you. The first is this, embrace unreality. Rather than try to resort to defending yourself with digital scarcity, use the very tools of duplication that are now available to you. Clone your own voice, create your own digital avatar, train your own personal AI, and critically, develop your own unique, recognizable style. I mean, consider what's happening in the music industry. Traditional performing musicians were disrupted by recorded music. Recorded musicians were disrupted by Napster and the streaming industry. And now that industry itself will soon be disrupted by the rise of AI models which can mimic Kanye West or Eminem. Power will shift from those traditional music libraries to those that control the models that actually generate those distinguished discernible celebrity voices. 
What's happening in music will also happen in your industry, in your profession, so be ready to disrupt yourself. Second, embrace uncertainty. There's a concept in both AI and military strategy known as ground truth. In AI, the ground truth are the set of facts which are used to validate whether your model is making accurate predictions or not. In military terms, it's often the intelligence, the hard facts on the ground, which allow you to understand what's really happening in your battle space. But what do you do when you live in a world where your ground truth is not actually true? You stop relying on it. We need to be more Bayesian in our approach to decision making. And what that means is, rather than waiting to be absolutely certain that the information and facts we have at hand are completely true and accurate, we get more comfortable with acting on 60 or 70% certainty, knowing that by simply taking action, by making a decision, we can often collect more data to calibrate our beliefs and probabilities of what is actually occurring. Now, the difficult thing is, is that when you're dealing with these AI systems, is sometimes they seem so confident in the things they say and the content they produce. I believe in the near future, these systems will become a lot more sophisticated. They may give you an answer, but they may also give you bands of confidence so that you know that the information you're receiving can be believed, but only up to 75%. It's a small difference, but it's going to allow us to be more effective in making decisions and operating in a time of great ambiguity. Thirdly, and most important, embrace insanity. Toffler was probably right. The concept of sanity is closely linked with our ability to separate between what is real and what is not. But rather than seeking the absolute truth, what if in this new era of algorithmic fluidity, we instead sought some kind of tactical insanity? Because in that smallest moment, that window of opportunity, when anything can become something, we too have the opportunity to redefine and reinvent ourselves. And then, who has the right, machine, human or otherwise, to tell us who we can really be?